ഓം ജ്ഞാനചിരന്ധസ്യ ജ്ഞാനഞ്ജനശ്രദാകയ ചക്ഷുർമിലിതന്യനതസ്മൈ ശ്രീഗുരുവേ നമഃ ഹേ The brahmanas especially are very important in human society and the kshatriyas also these two orders are especially important these two are because these two orders guide the whole society the brahmanas they guide the society from the intellectual and spiritual platform and the kshatriyas they practically implement what advice is given by the brahmanas so again this prophet he was very much interested in setting up our national society that means proper leaders i remember when there was the presidential campaign for jimmy carter jimmy carter he was and who was his vice president i can't remember anyway their their campaign motto was leaders for a change although he was one of the most inept supposed to be leaders but that was their campaign slogan leaders for a change but there's no change there's no proper leaders some leaders have been there we see even in modern society there have been leaders just like in england in the united kingdom margaret thatcher was definitely a leader type although even in a woman's body that prophet said about indira gandhi that the fact that there was a woman ruling over the country means there were no kshatriyas as means there's no kshatriyas in the country because a kshatriya could a real kshatriya could not tolerate to be ruled by a woman so there's no actual kshatriya but some people have manifested leadership qualities that example came to mind but actual leadership means leadership should be in the right direction even to have leadership qualities that we see nowadays there are many seminars on leadership management personality and character development there's so many seminars actually if we go in the colleges and if we advertise we're going to give a class on character development and you'll find the students they're very eager to come because they want to know how to develop their character to survive in the rough tough well especially actually this more for university students and for for professionals management professionals they like this kind of personality development character development so uh, as you were saying yesterday that actually without sense control even to live in even to live as a karmi in this material world there has to be some measure of sense control otherwise you can't survive in, in the modern world even if you go in the office and men and women are there there has to be some measure of sense control otherwise you can't do you can't do your work so uh, leadership leadership is there there are so many different theories about leadership and how to manage and how to develop your personality just a few days ago vasugosh prabhu was telling me one the, the peter principle one in the 70s one professor called his name was peter and his observation was that people rise to the level of incompetence that you get promoted you do your work well you get promoted you do your work in that post when you get promoted and you eventually get to the point where you can't do your job properly and you stay there in in, a, in the position of incompetence and incompetently minister to others and there are so many management ideas one minute manager and the, the one minute manager and his monkeys and in search of excellence and now we have stephen covey the the great guru the great paramahamsa who is giving all the solutions to all the problems of the world so there are so many different theories and they may have some insights into human character and personality and how people interact in this and that admitted they may have some insights but they don't have the solution to all the problems because even if you are so called good at leading people or good at interacting with people if you're a nice person or a good person without the knowing the goal of life then it's all useless bhagavad bhakti hinasya jati shastra tapasya അപ്രാണസ്യായിവദേഹസ്യമണ്ഡനം 
One is expert in Shastra. One is expert in pronouncing Vedic mantras or Japa or whatever it may be. That it is, it may be very good, but it is simply the decoration of a dead, just like the decoration of a dead body. In some societies they decorate dead body. When someone dies, they dress them up in, in Ireland, they do, they have the wake. Have you heard of that? The wake. You know, they, someone dies and they dress him up in a nice suit and make him look very nice and people come to pay their last respects. And that was institutionalized as a kind of religion in Russia. In Moscow, the, 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 to the body of Lenin, was the Lenin mausoleum, and it was, when we went there, I don't think now, but when I first went to Russia in 1986, we saw early in the morning, big long lines of people standing just like you have to go to, to in India, you have to go to the train station. You go early to queue up, or outside the American embassy. In you see, early morning people are queuing up. So like that, they were queuing up to see the dead body of Lenin, which was preserved. But simply, you're seeing a dead body. And what is it? It's a dead body. You, you neither talk or do any work. Simply, people go to see. Oh, this is the rascal who killed the czars and uh, took over the country. So, decoration of a dead body. You may organize your society very nicely, just like in the Western countries. Actually, in many ways, the society is organized very nicely. Compared to India, if you go to the Western countries, generally, this is a generalization, the streets are cleaner, and you don't find big piles of rubbish, and they've got it well organized so that all the cripples and the crazy people are locked away so you don't see them, so you're in a big illusion that life is wonderful. And uh, they have well-organized social benefits, medical welfare, education system. Even Prabhupada, he was in England, he said, actually the government is it's well-organized, they look after the people nicely. He appreciated at some level they're doing that. But, on the other hand, if you organize it very nicely, but there's no consciousness of what the goal of life is, then despite your good organization, then simply it will be cats and dogs society. As I was reading in the Bhagavatam this morning, with Ayananda Maharaj just making the comment, that there's no question of peace in society. People, they mix up men and women, and then lust is automatically ignited, and there's no question of peace in society, because people's minds are not peaceful, because they're always lusty. Sada samadvigna, asadgrahat, because they have accepted asat, that which is not actually the goal of life, as being the goal of life, namely sense gratification. Therefore, they're always in anxiety. So just this one factor, what to speak of so many other factors, because men and women are allowed to mix unrestrictedly, therefore people are full of lust, therefore individually there's no peace, and therefore there is always quarrel in human society. So Hridayananda Maharaj made the comment, that there's no question of peace in such a society, but rather the whole society, it's management of conflict. How to control conflict within human society. And that's practically how it's going on. The whole human society, the police forces, the, just like Prabhupada many times he noted, that uh, flying on the airplane. So in the airplane you expect, because it's expensive to fly, so you expect that more money people, and then you expect more money people, you expect them to be well-behaved gentlemen. But Prabhupada noted that they have to search everybody for weapons because they're afraid that anybody may get on the plane and hijack the plane. So Prabhupada was noting that even people who are expected to be gentlemen, they have to be searched. They're not to be trusted. No one is to be trusted. And so this is the modern society. That even uh, so, Prabhupada also noted that that a so-called gentleman is recognized by his suit and tie. Not by his behavior, but if someone has a suit and tie, people, they respect him. If you want to be respected, go in a suit and tie. Of course, in India, especially in the hot season, it's ridiculous. You see people, they're wearing suits, and it's so hot, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. They should wear some loose, cuddy clothes, which is natural for this climate. All right? It's just a covering for respectability, that's all. In South India, even respectable people, they wouldn't wear top piece. Why, why, why would you wear? It's just you wear something to cover the bottom part of your body. Men, that is. Women, of course, have to keep themselves covered, and they're not supposed to go in public anyway. So, uh, 
Anyway, this idea, suit and tie, makes the, the dress makes the man, they say. Sometimes they, sometimes they advertise like that. I have personal experience. When I go to the Middle East, I put on a suit, and I go through the airport. People are very treat you very respectfully. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because they think you've come to their country to do some business and make some money. So if you have money, you're respected. That is the, that is the standard in modern society. That is stated in the Bhagavatam also, that one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga is that uh, if one is a poor man without money, he's considered uncivilized. And if you have money, then somehow or other you are considered very respectable. And that is the situation. You see, in India especially, you see people, they're shamelessly corrupt. But still they, he was saying that also, this Lalo, he's got a nice name. Actually, Lalo, it's a nice name, name of Krishna. But his personality is most heinous, most corrupt, low-class rascal. So uh, he's saying, well, if, if I'm put in jail for my, for my crime, anyway, I'll run the state from, from the jail. What's the, he's thinking that, any, what's the difference? In Saudi Arabia, if I'm in the jail, I'm associating with criminals. And outside the jail, he's always associated with criminals also. Openly, brazenly. He walks around with his, his cronies, uh, convicted murderers who are supposed to be in prison, but they're walking around with them in public. So this is the status of modern society, that uh, the, the most uh, degraded people, Lecharajanya Rupina, they are most degraded people, and they've taken the position of kings and rulers. So, Prabhupada is giving the idea, what is the proper standard of society? Actually, it's very inspiring when we read Prabhupada's books. You see, yes, this is how society is supposed to be. And we can see how it can work. That if, if society is centered on the whole goal of life for everybody is attaining Krishna consciousness, or even if everybody's not fixed directly on that, if everybody's not so intelligent, at least the leaders are, and then the leaders institute Vedic principles within society, then society will be very nice. And it will be just like uh, heaven. People say they want Ram Rajya. But Ram Rajya means you have to have Ram as the king, or the representative of Ram. Just like Yudhishthya Maharaj. It was just like that, Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj, he saw one low-class person beating a bull. And he was prepared to kill that person for the crime. And nowadays, the slot, you see, Prime Minister Brahmin, Narasimha Harao, was the Prime Minister. And he was sponsoring the opening of a slaughterhouse in Hyderabad. And this is the, this is, uh, he was behind it. And in India today, they were saying, why are people opposing this? It's simply sentiment. We learn so much foreign exchange by exporting meat. So they were protesting that we should, we should allow such things. So, uh, the whole society, uh, so, uh, another thing, it's actually illegal to kill, in many states it's illegal to kill cows, but if they're injured, or if they have some bodily, severe bodily defect, then you can kill them. So what they do, before they send them to the slaughterhouse, they smash their feet with a hammer, and then they send them to the slaughterhouse, just in case any government inspector comes. So this is the situation in modern society. And there are so many things, so many, many, many things. The whole society is so nasty and mean and horrible in every in every sphere that Shukdev Goswami said, Kala Kale Rajan, that this Kali Yoga it is an ocean of faults. You can just imagine in the ocean the fish is swimming, whether he swims up, down, left, right, forwards or backwards. Everywhere there's water. So in an ocean of faults in every sphere you look, in the economic sphere, all corruption and cheating. Family life means all quarrel. And husband and wife, they cannot live together. You see, the husband will live in Dubai and the wife will be in Madras. Uh, in, every, in education, it's just all teaching. In America, they have a very good term, BS. I won't say it here. But uh, in Urdu also, a very good word, bakwas. Talk, in the, the education, they just talk of rubbish and nonsense, and this is called education. If you learn all, if you learn all lies, that is called education. Uh, if you learn all, all rubbish things, that's called education. So, in every sphere, the whole society is simply horrible. But here we have the clue in Srimad Bhagavatam, just like Prabhupada says in the preface. It's very nice. He says that 
despite so much progress in human society, despite so much progress in human society, there is a pinprick. Human society in the present moment is not in the darkness of oblivion. It has made rapid progress in the fields of material comforts, education and economic development throughout the entire world. But there is a pinprick somewhere in the social body at large, and therefore there are large-scale quarrels even over less important issues. In the 1970s, El Salvador and Honduras, two tiny countries in Central America, they, had, they went to war over, you know, you know what? They had a football game and there was some quarrel over the, there was some disputed penalty in the football game. And then after that they went to war. <laughs> so even over less important issues, there is need of a clue as to how humanity can become one in peace, friendship and prosperity with a common cause. Srimad Bhagavatam will fill this need for it is a cultural presentation for the re-spiritualization of the entire human society. So, Brahmanas are needed, first of all. Kshatriyas are needed. Vaishyas are needed. Vaishya means, not this cheating business Vaishya. Vaishya means, Krishi Goraksha Vanija. Vanija, Krishi means the agricultural activities. That also not rape the earth with all kinds of chemicals and produce cash crops. That also is a business. But you produce what you need and what you need and for the other orders of society too. And Goraksha, protection of cows, and Vanidja means business. But Prabhupada said not this, he was describing it, not this modern cheating business. But Vanidja means you produce grains and different products and excess you trade it. That's Vanidja. So, Krishi Goraksha and, and other, they, the uh, Vaishyas, they may also be bankers, that's also. But more honorable is protection of cows and agriculture. So, Krishi Goraksha Vanyajam and Harichayat Makam, serving others, that is the duty of Shudras. So, all the orders are needed in human society, especially Brahmanas are needed, Kshatriyas are needed. And everyone who has come to Krishna Conscious, whether they take up full-time preaching, we very much need preachers, whether they're doing a job, whether they're doing business, whatever they're doing, everyone should have this ideal. This is required. Our Krishna Conscious movement is not supposed to be simply sitting in the ashram and doing little bhajan, but it's meant to change human society. So that requires ideals. We have to live to an ideal. If one cannot come to the highest ideal, a brahmana, preacher, then at least he has to maintain in his life some ideal. Even if the whole, even if all your associates, the people, you're doing, say you're doing some job and all your friends say, oh, there's a good movie, let's go and see. Say, no, I'm not going to go. I have an ideal. My ideal is to become Krishna conscious. So it's required in all strata of society that people take up this Krishna consciousness and live according to this ideal, and gradually the society will be changed. We have great, great work to do, but this great work of changing human society begins with individuals, and individuals means you and me. So let us take the vow to be ourselves Krishna conscious, and that, that in itself will be our contribution towards the re-spiritualization of human society which was Srila Prabhupada's dream, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire. It will come to pass that we have to become the instruments in Krishna's hands to make that come to pass. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Yes. Maharaj, we can test the if the man have a money that is a civilized person. If the man has no money that is not a civilized person. That's the modern perspective. In yes. the modern perspective nowadays. Yes. It's not actually true, but that's how people think. But what are the solutions to change his mind about the Krishna consciousness? Preach to people. How did you come to Krishna consciousness? Someone preached to you, right? So it's the same with everyone. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.